Okay, can we start now? You can. Okay, let's uh, we'll call the roll or then you can do your. Alderman Nelson. Here. Alderman Hanneman. Here. Dennis cannot join us. John Howard. Here. Member Schmidt. Here. We do have a quorum. <coughs> States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, no, no citizens here, so we'll skip a few citizens' comment period. Approval of the July 27th minutes. And then approval of Okay, is there any discussion? No. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Okay, review of the audit services request proposal for um, Franklin. So you might recall that uh, earlier this summer, <coughs> and in council approved the uh, circulation of a RFP request for proposal to audit firms. Uh, that proposal was circulated in mid-July uh, with a due date earlier this month. We received six proposals, one from the incumbent firm and five additional ones. We received six proposals, one from the incumbent firm and five additional ones. Um, I included a summary of the, the cost proposals from each of the <coughs> firms in the packet. I'd made from each of the firms in the packet. I'd make one my, one correction to that. The um, five-year summary at the bottom of the first page for Baker Tilly should have the 67.5 as opposed to the 68.5, which matches the top number that we just added up, item up, item correctly. Uh, Baker Tilly called me after they, as they were sending their proposal in, and said that um, they really enjoyed working with the city. Uh, however, their management felt they weren't realizing sufficient return on their investment, and so they were coming to proposal than they might <coughs> otherwise have done. And clearly, when you look at their proposal versus some of the others, it comes in that high. Um, but Baker Tilly is a um, well-known and audits many, many municipal company uh, cities here in the state, so they are highly qualified. The proposals. I would start with the ones that I sort of eliminated as I looked at them. Riley Penner Benton came in at a, with a, probably a, one of the highest proposals I've seen, and I saw so at that point I just sort of said, "Well, there's not a lot of reason to be able to go there." Whipley in their proposal did not indicate any real experience with um, government audits here in the state, and so from my standpoint, probably not the best qualified firm to audit us. So that left us with uh, Sickich, Hawkins Ash, and Clifton Larson Allen. Hawkins Ash also had very limited municipal experience, municipal experience um, in the state. So again, I would I would not necessarily recommend that firm. That left us with Clifton Larson Allen and Sickich. Um, between the two, Sickich has the lower cost proposal. But they don't audit, I think they were cost proposal, but they don't audit, I think they have like four governments in Wisconsin, and two of those are agencies. So they have very limited experience, and we would certainly be the largest government that uh, Sickich would uh, audit. However, they that uh, Sickich would uh, audit. However, they do have some very interesting ideas in how they go about doing their work and would subject staff to a very different look at things should they come in. Clifton Larson Allen was the incumbent before the most, so they had six years worth of service on the city. Uh, they do good work. And uh, you'll note that in the recommendation, staff is recommending the engagement of Clifton Larson Allen, but recognizing that Sickage's <laughs> Um, a potential candidate. So I'd open it up for questions. Let's elaborate a little bit more on mentioned by different as a train of thought and how they would. 
Well, Sickich, in their proposal, and I did get a few copies of the two uh, proposals in case someone wanted to read it, indicated in their proposal that they have, and what they will do is take copies of all of our transactions in several of our systems, the general ledger system, our utility billing system, accounts payable, and they would literally run their, all the transactions through this looking for uh, transactions. And I asked them to demonstrate the software for me, and I, I did see that uh, recently. One of, there's a mathematical formula out there that says there's a normal distribution of the first digit value in any transaction. And if you start seeing things that, if you start seeing things that aren't in that normal distribution, that would suggest there's something odd going on, and you want to take a look at some of those transactions. Um, we ran our general ledger against that for the first nine months of the year, and they did point out a couple things that looked kind of odd. And so then you, you just say, let's take a look, and they did point out a couple things that looked kind of odd. And so then you, you just say, let's take a look, closer look at these things. Um, they have the ability with that software to see and compare, for instance, if a uh, employee shows up in accounts payable and you're cutting a lot of checks to that employee, you kind of go, what's that all about? And you're cutting a lot of checks to that employee, you kind of go, what's that all about? Or if employees are utility customers, you take a little closer look at some of those utility accounts and make sure somebody's not adjusting off balances without getting paid. So this electronic review of our transactions is something none of the other firms talked about. And because they don't have a lot of Wisconsin experience, my guess is they would approach our financials from a different angle than anyone has approached them before. That's not all bad, but it also suggests maybe there's some things they should be looking at that they're not looking at because they don't have the Wisconsin experience. So this night cuts both ways. Yeah, I think that we're all clients because um, their, their bid is at 35% realization. I, I agree with you. I think they're trying to buy their, their way into the Wisconsin market, and they see yeah. this as an opportunity to potentially do that. And I don't know that I see that as a bad thing, inherently, because um, as I looked at the um, bios, um, has education with the Wisconsin Government Finance Officers Association. He's very active in that association. And our Director of Government Services is a graduate of Advanced Government Finance Institute with the University of Wisconsin. At Madison so um, they do seem to bring us knowledge of the Wisconsin model whatever those differences might be from Illinois um, so that gives me a little bit more comfort that, that opinion is out of the neighborhood I, I talked to so Dennis called me on this topic earlier <clears throat> when he said he couldn't make it and uh, called me on this topic earlier <clears throat> when he said he couldn't make it and uh, one of his comments was it did appear to him that Sikic was trying to potentially buy some business in. He specifically said, where would they staff the firm? And I said, the, the audit, I said, I didn't know, but they did not indicate there was any T&E expenses that they were going to firm. And I said, the, the audit, I said, I didn't know, but they did not indicate there was any T&E expenses that they were going to try and charge. Mm -hmm. So I called the partner on it uh, today and spoke with him. His comment was staffing would be done from their Brookville office. So they have two folks there that do government work because they have a limited number of clients work because they have a limited number of clients and they would be on the <coughs> but the manager and partner would be share time between Naperville and Wisconsin so the senior folks would be they they work in both offices not saying they're not Wisconsin residents don't know where they are but that would be something a little bit different <coughs> working remotely or whether they'd be working on site he said well like many firms right now, they're doing as much as they can remotely, but that's a COVID thing. I said, well, this is a multi-year proposal. I got to believe three years from now, we're hopefully not talking about the pandemic any longer at that point. Right. And he said, well, they have like any longer at that point. Right. And he said, well, they have learned that they can do some a fair amount of work remotely, but they're not adverse to being on site. And he think his comment was. They think they build a better rapport with their clients when they're on site. And I absolutely agree with that. A question for document preparation. The proposal, the base proposal is with staff continuing to do the 
the CAFR themselves, which is what we've done for a number of years. Mm -hmm. But because we don't know the skill set of my replacement, <coughs> we asked mm -hmm. them to put in understanding is we are fairly unique in the state in preparing our own CAFR document. Mm -hmm. There's not a lot of communities that do that. Most oftentimes the audit firms do do that. Okay. So that's, that's just something else to be aware of. So it was included in the proposal? They gave an alternate proposal okay. to do that particular piece. included in the proposal? They gave an alternate proposal okay. to do that particular piece. And they, they said they wanted an extra $5,000 to prepare that report. Okay. So just maybe a little bit added on to that is the PSC report. That's something that the auditors currently do right now. Likely currently do right now. Likely, fact, we probably share them on the network already. Or we give it to them because we have to give them all the information. And really, when you look at the difference between the PSC report and the CAFR, um, PSC report takes less than a week to complete. Well, how long does it take? CAFR. Oh, three, four weeks. Mm -hmm. So that's the difference. Mm -hmm. and, and very honest, I can't. I knew that would be able to go to CAFR efficient in years, not well trying to learn everything. But I mean, it's set up very well, and there's a lot of documentation. There's a lot of documentation. That's a tall order. So the, my recommendation to the committee would be to engage Clifton Larson Allen. I know it's a little more expensive, but I think it's the Safe gets the safe recommendation. If um, if we were retaining you for the next five years, I would likely want to recommend stickage, but bringing a replacement in next top of date. I am with the city already. Right? Sorry, so they worked with the city before. Right? Yeah. Yes. So they would not. They would have a fair amount of same partners. Right? Same partners. They would have the fair amount of um, what's called a permanent file in their files that would be fairly accurate. Yet, yes. um, and it we need to understand that this should not be solely looked at in terms of the cost of the proposal because different professionals have different <coughs> qualifications. Clifton Larson Allen is highly qualified. Baker Tilly came in, is also highly qualified. They're probably the two competing firms in the city. Baker Tilly came in with a more competitive bid. And so I think that was one of the reasons why we made the switch. And we had been with Baker Tilly for since like 92. So like very long period of time. The only reason I was asking is there was something, the reason that we had the transition away from, the reason that we had the transition away from, I don't think there was anything overriding there. <coughs> okay, does anybody want to make a motion on this or is it I will move the I will move the recommendation of Clifton Larson Allen as the 2021-2024 auditor. I'll second it. Okay. So moved and seconded to so appoint uh, or recommend that Clifton Larson Allen be our for five years. All those in favor say aye. 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 Five years. All those in favor say aye. 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 How many years? It's a three year proposal with two years of alternatives. Okay. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Last month, we had told you that we were working on this um, new five-year plan, and we want to give the Finance Committee a preview of it um, in advance of the budget. So this isn't draft one. This is just a preview. Draft one will come out with the um, draft budget on September 21st. Um, but just want to give the committee a chance to take a look at it, see if there's any. Um, but just want to give the committee a chance to take a look at it, see if there's any um, suggestions, changes, 
uh, it, it's been a really big process. It's been taking a lot of time. Paul and I just discussed it today. It's, it's slowing down the budget process quite a bit right now, um, but that's really to be expected. And there's been already so many um, been out, um, but that's really to be expected. And there's been already so many um, benefits of, of starting to compile this information. I was on the phone with uh, Rupert and Milky, who's our consultant for impact fees. They want to look at this. They think this is a really good basis. We talk about our debt plan and our future borrowing. Just looking at a one view sometimes it's just looking at a one view sometimes it's really hard to really get our wits about us and on top of that it, it's a very large plan now keep in mind it's um, about 140 million for five years but keep in mind we do have a seven million dollar water tank next year and 26 million factored in for um, other um, almost 20 million for DPW and fire facilities. And again, those are such high level numbers. I, I wouldn't bank on them, but just know that of this 140 million, probably about 40 million odd things. But I think this is pretty indicative of some of the needs. <coughs> and I use of some of the needs. <coughs> and I use needs a little bit loosely because of course these are all department requests. So there's been no vetting of this at this point. All the departments have submitted what they believe um, their five year plans are, I'm sure. Years three, four, and five are lighter than um, years one and two because we just have to train people. Here. But I think there's going to be a lot of benefits as we go forward with this. So I'd leave this with you. I'm happy to take any feedback you have or um, how we might be able to do a little bit better. I apologize for the small print. We're going to figure out a way to get that better. Um, in the <coughs> printing, but we just wanted to make sure we do it all. An amazing document. <coughs> it's a lot of work. Man. Yeah. I'm gonna wallpaper my office with this. Well, and when we get it, and when we get it into final format, most people will likely want to go with an electronic document because there's gonna be a reference column over on the right, and those are gonna be all the individual project request sheets from the reference column over on the right, and those are gonna be all the individual project request sheets from the department, okay. so that any of the readers are able to dig in and find out more about the um, certain items that they're. So. And so, so just out of curiosity. Moving forward, once this is finalized, how often is are the costs actually updated? You know, if how often is are the costs actually updated? You know, if this is like a working document, yeah. so to speak, are they updated regularly or how often? So it will be the minimum would be one year, but we talk about things like our impact fees. We really have to stay on top of those so that we're not budgeting and collecting impact fees for projects that aren't going to happen and different things. So as things change throughout the year. Um, we'll be updating that, but at a minimum, year two in 20, the 2023 plan, 2023 through 2026, will all be reviewed and then um, updated. The interesting thing was some of the departments factored in, like inflation, inflation perspective. I didn't ask them not to, but usually I like to see everything in base dollars, and then we kind of let inflation do its thing over time. Um, so just so you know, it, it was a big ask for us. To ask all the departments to do all this work, so that for the first year, I think we can really do that. But yeah, minimum of once a year it'll be updated, and and we'd like to ask. That, but yeah, minimum of once a year it'll be updated, and and we'd like to ask the committee perhaps to come back. You know, right now our focus is 2022. Once the budget is adopted in 2022, we can start looking at the 23 through 23 items. So that we can get a head start, because the best time to do a CIP isn't at budget time. Because the best time to do a CIP isn't at budget time; it's about six months ahead. So we can kind of see, you know, kind of get that squared away and put aside. So that would be something we would see taking a look at in early spring. Okay, thank you. If there's anything else on this? Stuff, we'll move on to the next topic. Uh, so in that particular vein. Um, I did include a memo which you've seen before. It's, I just updated it for the most recent receipt. Uh, absent any other direction, because we've been telling you that <clears throat> the, the receipt of the landfill site and go into the operating funds, primarily because this is a receipt or resource that is a, not a forever resource. So it, at some point in time, it will end. Now, it may not end in the near term, but at some point in time, it will end, and you do not want to be in a situation where you are. But at some point in time, it will end, and you do not want to be in a situation where you are 
having annual expenditures that are dependent upon that Absolutely. resource because then when it goes away, you've got a big hole in your activities. So having said that, we distributed across multiple funds, the general capital funds primarily. Um, we've been, finance has been saying for quite some time that the equipment replacement fund and the street improvement fund are underfunded, meaning there are greater demands for um, expenditures than what we've been providing resources in that fund. Finance would take any excess receipts and split it evenly between those two funds, unless we get some alternate direction. And we've been asking for some time. Um, and so last year we put it all into the capital improvement fund, which has built up its balance, but going through the capital improvement fund, which has built up its balance, but going forward right now, we're doing uh, the receipts with the expectation any excess funds would get split between the street improvement fund and the uh, equipment replacement fund, so that those funds would have the additional resource uh, equipment replacement fund, so that those funds would have the additional resource needed, hopefully, to meet its, their requirements going forward. Would the money be eligible to cover the water main and street issuance in case? In much higher than what they thought that be. Well, the latest estimate that I've seen on that repair is something between sixty and seventy thousand um, dollars. Highway department supervisor, and it will be close, but there may be sufficient appropriations in the highway department already okay. to cover that particular item. But you're suggesting we could put some additional monies in the general fund, which would then cover that over. So monies in the general fund. Which would then cover that over. Anything else on that? <clears throat> excuse me. On that same note, um, and I don't know if, if it is the same note or not, but there's the project, the much more because they found some other issues with having to put in wider ditches and bigger culverts. Now, is this the type of same vein that we could use? This type of funding for this or is this something so I had conversations with the deputy engineer this morning and his suggestion to me was the rec the his suggestion to me was the rec the request that's in the plan right now and this plan is sufficient to cover the cost of that were your conversations more recent than this morning uh, no it was I got a call from Glenn last night about uh, it was mid-afternoon and just mid-afternoon and just discussed concerns that these you know because that's the, that's the the start of the Ryan Creek <laughs> so you've got a, you've got that you've got the, 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 the flooding forever and all this other stuff <clears throat> and he said that we we're gonna have a challenge is trying to fill trying to get that the, that funding for that project that's been an estimate for me but he could provide one it's 134 36. the current request is for about hundred and thirty five thousand years You, you might recall that two years ago, the estimate was considerably higher for that same project. And the scope didn't change. Request, that's why I called engineering and I said, are you confident that this request is going to be enough to do it, uh, deal with it? And Tyler's comment was, yes, the current request should be sufficient. So we're getting slightly different Right. Responses from engineering, depending on who you talk to about that project and who you talk to about that project. But I can tell you that project is in this group of projects. Is it an emergency project that needs to be completed sooner? Uh, I would say it's to the point with the flooding and everything else that goes on in that neighborhood every year. That's why we try to move it up, and then that's why we try to move it up, and then the. Again, this is engineering geek talk, but it was more, you know, how, how do we get the drainage going? How do we get the, because it's built, the, the whole neighborhood's built like in this low area. And it was proposed that by making these replacements and doing the roads, because the roads, when they get flooded out, that, and they, yeah, all this other stuff. But what you're saying is, you know, 
I, I don't know if it would be categorized as emergency. In my district, probably that's if I was going to earmark one area, but I would like to depend on engineering to say if it's an emergency, but I would think flooding numerous times a year, and it would think flooding numerous times a year and issues like that where the roads are crumbling and nothing, everything's backed up because every culvert is jammed and failing. I don't know. Is I mean, it something they'd even be able to get done this year? I don't know. Basically four months. Basically four months. I, don't know. I would have a hard time understanding how a contractor this late in the season could, yeah. could make that happen. Now, if you said drop everything and come in, and then we'll build I don't think the price for dropping everything. Yeah, it's I, I don't. It's not a drop everything you in. I mean, I was just there this past weekend. Uh, not had any. Then all of a sudden, it was ironic. I was doing my little tour through there, and then all of a sudden, I got a call from Glenn a couple days later. Unrelated, but I'm just saying. You know, I I it's a priority in to get done, and I thought we had that scheduled to get done, and everything. there are. $28 million worth of projects for next year. Mm -hmm. And I can tell you, we don't have $28 million worth of resources to cover that. So there's going to be a really interesting conversation about, there's going to be a really interesting conversation about how, how do you fund mm -hmm. those projects? Or prioritize. I mean, I mm -hmm. So we're working on that, but one thing you should know is um, engineering department has um, requested funds for projects. So typically, they do actually request a, a lot more than that. I think the question on whether <coughs> physically we can get all those projects done. But I know the goal in the 2022 is to increase that street building. Mm -hmm. So something higher than the one million, like right. maybe not two and a half, but maybe like one and a half. Um, and like I said, I know that project is the two to three streets that made it by name, and you probably know better than me because you're looking at them right now. Uh -huh. But there were only a couple streets that made it by name. Them, um, so I think it's pretty high on the list. I guess my thought is looking through, is looking through some of these projects especially some of the smaller ones that we might be able to get done this year if we have the cash, like the citywide park signage at 25 grand. You know, so that cash, like the citywide park signage at 25 grand. You know, so that could come, just maybe get some of these littler ones done that are doable. Um, some of the other ones. Well, Alderman, I would direct your attention then to the. Well, Alderman, I would direct your attention then to the financial report that's further on mm -hmm. our agenda. But the street improvement fund, which is page nineteen of that report. Yeah. And you'll see that our, <laughs> our our appropriations for street improvements are a million dollars, and we currently have improvements are a million dollars, and we currently have nine hundred and forty-three thousand of that million dollars spent. So there's really not a lot of additional resource available. Yeah. So we can do a driveway. <laughs> yeah, that's about it. Two. Okay. Through July, we are complete as of today. You might recall we had um, delays during the audit getting the, the bank recs done. And I uh, was unhappy about that situation. Uh, worked with staff. Uh, Clearly, when we brought on the revised credit card process, the revised credit card process where we started taking credit cards for the first time for utility payments, and we're taking lots of credit card payments. We've been through two cycles now, and we've had over 4,400 um, utility credit card payments. And uh, that's, a lot of credit, that's a lot of credit card payments when we took none before. Um, but the... How they came into our bank statement really through the bank reconciliation process into a tither. It took us quite some time to get that done, but now we are done and we are we were able to follow go through that process yesterday and say 
now that we've got these accounts all reconciled and they're down to the penny, there's no unreconciled difference. There are a number of reconciling items in, the, in several of the accounts and his goal is to get those cleaned up by the end of the year as well. So I, I would say substantial progress is being made on the bank rec at the end of the year as well. So I, I would say substantial progress is being made on the bank reconciliation process. But I will continue to keep you informed about what's happening. Okay, thank you, Paul. Okay, the uh, <coughs> review of the July 21 uh, financial report. I have one. <coughs> On the uh, post employment benefits trust, uh, what's the actual difference? The liability is at the end of 2020 was 10.5 million. Okay. Okay, so our investment results are fluctuate. I call them lump for lack of a better term, but I think that helps you understand. You'll have good years, and maybe you have two or three good years, and then you'll have a bad year, and it could be a really bad year, so. <laughs> or unpleasant years. Is that a good way to put it? Yeah. Emotional volatility. So you kind of have to look at this, and is that a good way to put it? Yeah. Emotional volatility. So you kind of have to look at this, and actually the many actuaries will <coughs> smooth the investment results and amortize the gains or losses over a longer period of time so that it takes out some of that fluctuation. Right. Okay. That fluctuation. Right. Okay. So um, there's a cover memo that just speaks to a number of items. The first part is, and I... I one of the most important parts about government, state or municipal government reporting is what's your cash, how well is it being managed, managed. And state law requires, and it's very prudent, that your cash is invested in a highly safe environment. You do not want to be in a situation where you've made investments with cash that you're going to need tomorrow or the very next day and have a cash balances for the governmental purposes. We are precluded from investing in securities such as equities um, and highly rated bond documents and bank balances, insured bank balances are the requirement. So that is how our funds are invested. We've gone over the invest balances are the requirement. So that is how our funds are invested. We've gone over the investment policies. So the very first statement that you have after the, the description of what's going on is a description of your cash balances, where it's invested, and what the, the uh, <coughs> maturity is only about two, two and a half years to 2023. So we're pretty short. We're anticipating that in some point in time, interest rates will again get to a more normalized or at least a better situation. And we can invest with some additional returns, but that's part of what's going on. Long as I've experienced over a number of different years, we generate surpluses early in the year because we collect our taxes. In August, we will get the last of our tax money in, and then our receipts go to practically nothing for the balance of the year, but we have our largest expense is payroll, and that flows pretty evenly. But we have our largest expense is payroll, and that flows pretty evenly across the year, except for any overtime and un very unusual situations. Um, the good news is some of our receipts are running a little bit stronger than we thought. Um, some of our expenses have not been as great, primarily because of vacancy. That's where the general fund has been experiencing some uh, items. Debt service is a pretty boring topic. We know what our debt maturities are. We know what our interest costs are. So if there's nothing much going on there we make our payments on time the next set of statements you have if there's a summary statement for all the tids together even for all the tids together again oftentimes tids are boring because you're in a debt service uh, mode we have uh, six active tids the first two are in a debt payment mode tid 5 and tid 
The first two are in a debt payment mode. TID 5 and TID 6 are principally in a debt payment mode. Most of their expenditures have now occurred, and we're going to be collecting increment and paying off the debt. TID 7 has a little bit of activity because there'll be significant <laughs> municipal revenue obligations, which are payments of the because there'll be significant <laughs> municipal revenue obligations, which are payments of the collection of taxes. And in TID 8, that's in a that's in its infancy, and we'll have significant longer-term capital expenditures as those projects come forward. Then I provided you a statement on EDs um, that would be of any real concern. Solid Waste Fund is what the fund that we use to track our garbage collection. Again, we charge the residents at the beginning of the year for their garbage collection, and then we pay the hauler as they go in and collect it. Everything's happening there. That last one, so I decided to include it. You can see that we collected a million, nearly a million nine. We will collect another million nine about a year from now. And currently, there are no plans to spend that money, but I'm sure they will come along. Um, capital outlay fund. Um, what do you say about that? As expected, expenditures. We seem to be. We've got nearly $700,000 spent against the $2 million amended plan, so there's some additional expenditures that will take place. The largest expenditure for the year is the ordering of police cars. As soon as we get into the new year, the ordering of police cars. As soon as we get into the new year, police like to order those cars, and they like to get them on hand. So that, that is taking place, I believe, most of the vehicles have now arrived. It does take a while to equip those. And they're way behind. Right Pardon now. me? They're way behind. Mm -hmm. Like a year behind. Orders. And they're way behind. Right Pardon now. me? They're way behind. Mm -hmm. Like a year behind. Orders. But I believe we've ordered three or four cars, and I thought the police had taken delivery on all of them. They may have, but I'm saying the ones that they're ordered in the last, like, 60 days, are they're just, that's how stupid this whole... Anyway, you're talking about the manufacturers, and they're having yeah, significant both, both problems. Getting, yeah, if you're a police agency and you're trying to order certain vehicles, it's your like a year. It's never been like that. Go to Hiller Ford, Jay Hiller. There's your car. Cool. Yeah. Well, manufacturers have got some resourcing issues on equipment replacement funds. Substantially, all the equipment that is planned for this year has orders have been placed for. Street Improvement Fund, as we just we talked about earlier, that money, we had a million dollars. They came in a little bit light on the quote. We added a couple streets, and then there's been some additional charges for the quote. We added a couple streets, and then there's been some additional charges for highway department work along with that. Capital Improvement Fund, the best thing to describe there is to look at page 21, because you see there the individual projects. The most significant project that is currently really active is those particular projects. Most of what you see there are encumbrances, and you'll see there's a million three at the bottom of encumbrances backed out because we haven't had to disperse those funds yet. Uh, the development fund is where we collect impact fees, and impact fees are, I believe, the primary reason of that for that is we haven't had any significant commercial developments pull permits but the single family and multi-family <coughs> homes those are moving along nicely but the large impact fees from commercial projects just haven't occurred yet fees from commercial projects just haven't occurred yet utility development that's a collection of prior Special assessments. Most special assessments are collected on, an, on a uh, payment basis through property tax bills because they uh, payment basis through property tax bills because they go on a ten-year payment plan with their annual payment on their tax bill. So once in a while, a property will change hands, and the buyer will say, "Clean that up and pay it off." And so we'll see those collections. But other than that, there's not a lot going on. Self-insurance fund is self-insured for health benefits. We have two insurance funds. This is the fund covering active employees and their costs. City pays the lion's share of the premium. Employees do contribute towards it. Uh, we also offer a dental program, so you see those, those activities here. 
activities here. Um, we're essentially a break even through July on this fund. A year ago, we had $700,000 in a surplus. We just didn't have any real claims in the first half of last year. We planned on a very small deficit for the year. So we're pretty much running according to plan. Small deficit for the year. So we're pretty much running according to plan. Um, with a fund balance at $3.2 million, this is an area. I, I will probably bring forward to a finance committee meeting in October, because your September meetings are going to be focused on the budget, premium holiday late in the year. So I really don't have authority to move to collect a premium in either November or December, but I would bring it forward and ask council to ratify that, that part of the budget. Um, and we can make that decision at a later point in time. These post-employment benefit plan, again, this is a plan where you would expect to incur an insurance deficit. And the reason is the people who are covered under this plan are older because they're retirees. And the, the biggest group in this plan are our public safety folks. Police and fire folks have the ability to get city coverage by this plan once they reach age 53 at the earliest and 55 it would be a normal retirement age. And so they'd have 10 years, 12 years of health coverage under that. Um, not coverage under that. Um, Non-public safety folks generally don't qualify for this coverage until they reach 62 or 63. So a very short period of time. But because people tend to be older that are covered by this plan, you would expect that they would have greater health care costs than an, a small, small group. There's only about 35 people who are covered by this plan right now that are actively receiving benefits or eligible to receive benefits. And it's been a couple of good years. We've had some bad years in this plan, and you normally would expect to have a deficit from insurance operations and just have some additional costs. Operations and just have some additional costs. Um, you can see right now we've had also some great investment returns, $800,000 for the first seven months on a $8 million uh, portfolio. Uh, that's, nice. that's nice to be able to report, but understand it can change in a heartbeat. So any questions on this report? No, there's no questions. Uh, entertain a motion so moved. Second. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Okay. We got maybe one more item that cover. Okay. Well, we just talked about the OPEB trust, that the performance of the fund, now you have before you a daily basis because I'm managing this. It's passive investments. Um, but I did find interesting in early August there was an article in the Wall Street Journal that uh, the bond markets are getting kind of goofy because of uh, perceived bad debt in the Chinese bond market and a fair number of in the Chinese bond market and a fair number of international people are holding Chinese bonds. So I immediately then that same day went out and looked at our bond funds to say how much in terms of Chinese bonds do they have. And we have a $2.8 million bond portfolio and about $12,000 in, $12, in Chinese bonds are sitting in that portfolio. So substantially not. Mm -hmm. And I was pleased to see that. Uh, our investment managers aren't buying that debt, which is good. Uh, currently, <clears throat> funds performing just fine. Um, and unless you have some questions, I don't. And then um, update on that. Past action. Other items that you have recommended acceptance by the Common Council, they have accepted. Okay. I have two future items uh, replacement recruitment plan and uh, uh, replacement recruitment plan and uh, anything else that you might like have us bring back to you. Anybody have anything? Okay. No other
other issues, and you know, I entertain a motion to adjourn. I move to adjourn. Second. It's no move and second to adjourn. All in favor say aye. Aye. Thank you. I like how you run meetings.